Hello. Um, I'm on my way to get my hair done. I'm going to actually have them color it. I usually color my own, as you know if you've ever followed me. But I'm going to splurge today and have a cut and curl. Cut and curl? Yeah, right, okay. Cut and color. And um, see if it comes out any better than when I do it. And if it doesn't, which I'm pretty sure it won't, I won't do it again. I mean, it's way cheaper to do it yourself. But uh, I want to just come in and say hi. Let you guys know how I'm doing. Um, so three weeks off my daytime Clonopin dose. And I definitely have had, you know, somebody pulling out the rug out from underneath me several times during the day. Each day, I'll have those moments of whoa. Um, forgot what day it was that my head was really whacked. I had a full day of, I can't remember which day it was. Today is Monday, the June 3rd. But um, forgive me, I gotta keep my eye on the traffic. I'm trying to pull out the traffic. <clears throat> uh, really bad wacko head again, the entire day. So why that happens, don't know. Um, I have taught myself not to let it make me crumble and fall. So many times in my history of this, I would just crumble and fall. And I just talk, you know, self-talk. Okay, I've been here. I've done this. I don't know why. It's all of a sudden on the blue hitting me hard. Did I cry? I did cry. I won't lie and say I didn't cry, but I didn't crumble. I didn't just, you know, stay in bed the whole day and just go, well, that's all I can do. I just kept doing what I was doing, feeling as awful as I felt. I don't know how I do it. I guess that I've learned to just work through it now. I have no idea. Um, yeah, on Saturday, I had it pretty bad. Um, but took my grand, two older grandkids out to lunch, then brought them back. They swam in the pool. The pool water is only 68 degrees. They're crazy. I won't go in it till it's 86, but they swam and we played and then I gave them dinner and then they went to church with me and I dropped them off. So I dropped them off at home around eight. So I had them the whole day and I was not, I wasn't, oh, we went garage sailing too, looking for another bike. I already got my granddaughter a bike um, now I'm looking for a bike for him. Yeah, garage sale too, driving and all of it. I, I don't know. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. So, had a pretty rough night trying to get to sleep last night. I ate nuts, and I think I have not an allergy, but a reaction to nuts. Because right after I ate them, um, I had some really weird symptoms and could not fall asleep. Took a melatonin and then ended up, you know, doing my sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, which I usually do. So anyway, I'm going to stop here. Um, it's freezing. It's about, well, it's 58 now. Uh, we went from, you know, high 70s to this morning. It was 45 degrees this morning. Mm -hmm. That's central New York for you. Although this weekend is supposed to be gorgeous. And the plan is, Yuda's birthday is on the 12th. So I want to surprise her via my my son-in-law, whether he'll do it or not. I'm going to tell her that I'm taking her out to lunch this Saturday. Um, and they're going to meet me at a lake about an hour away from here. I'm going to tell her that we're going to go to this lake and eat outside. There's a restaurant right on the lake and blah, blah, blah. And hopefully they're going to meet us there on the boat and take her out on the boat. And so, fingers crossed, Lord willing, I'll be able to go on the boat the last year I did go on the boat once. Um, it was on the river though. And so there wasn't a whole lot of waves and, you know, speeding and all that. I, I tolerated it. I was actually did really good that day, surprising enough. So Lord willing, I'm going to go on the boat this coming Saturday if my son-in-law is willing to do this with us. Um, so that's the plan for the weekend. All right, so I'll come back on and show you the... My hair is just going to get trimmed. I'm not getting it cut short. I like it longer in the summer so I can pull it up. I can pull it up in a clip um, and get it off my neck. Okay, bye-bye. Hi. Um, this is many days after that last clip. 
Um, this is actually Friday. Whole week has gone by. Been really busy. And I just, I definitely did want to come in because I've had a, a huge wave hit me this week since last weekend. Um, every morning has been really rough, very rough. Um, my old symptoms, by the way, the hair is colored. Don't know if you can tell, but the gray's gone at least. And new glasses, as you already saw. Um, yeah, the mornings are reminiscent of my old mornings. Uh, I'm sorry with the Oz. Tingling, burning, very spaced out. The spaced out is the worst. The spaced out, woozy, off-balanced, male debarkment, all of it. And I would love to blame it on, you know, four weeks off of being my daytime clonopin, but I had this while I was on the clonopin, so I'm not quite sure what's happening. It seems that it does dissipate as the day goes on. I push myself. I go walk. Walking actually helps me. I have found that getting out and walking, whether I'm stumbling or tilting to the side, I just do it. I've never fallen. Oh, that's that's a lie. I have fallen. But um, I haven't fallen in a long time. So I just figure, well, if I fall, I fall. Uh, I definitely think that being on my phone and on my laptop, the scrolling, the moving, because that's what I do in the morning. I listen to a, um, a teaching, a Bible teaching. And while I'm listening, I just play a stupid game like solitaire, something mindless. And throughout the morning, my head is very, very bad. And then once I've gotten outside and gotten away from the screens, my head seems to calm down. Does it go away totally? No, but it definitely calms down quite a bit. So with that said, um, again, with the, um, sorry. It's absolutely gorgeous out, blue skies, mid-70s, going to be up in the high 70s, low 80s for the rest of the weekend. So I'm waiting right now for Yuta, my stepmother, who is only 65 next week, um, to come and I'm going to get, I'm making lunch, I'm making just a simple wedge salad for us, and then we are going out shopping for furniture for myself. I want a new set for my family room. A good friend of mine will be moving into her own place. She's been living with her daughter and their family for a couple years now. She's finally getting back out, out on her own feet and getting an apartment. And she has no furniture other than her bedroom set. So I'm giving her my whole family room set. And I'm going out today to look for a new set. I wanted a new set anyway. Tomorrow's plan, as I told you, we are going to go. I'm taking... Yuta down to this beautiful lake um, and they have beautiful, oh, it's just a gorgeous lake and they have beautiful, they have a quaint, really quaint um, little shops in the village and two, several restaurants, but two right on the water. So the plan is I'm taking her and my da oldest daughter is going to join us, taking her to lunch and then her husband with the boat and the kids will be meeting us on the pier and we're going to take the boat out. The water's by no means warm enough to swim in. So it won't be the best time because we definitely want to be in the water and we won't be able to, but it is what it is. And then Sunday being so beautiful, we're just going to stay here uh, and barbecue and the kids can swim. Uh, everyone goes in the pool, but me. As of yesterday, the water was still only 68 degrees. So I won't go in the pool, but the kids went in the pool yesterday. I had my grandsons, uh, the two older ones, last evening, uh, so my daughter could go. Daughter and son-in-law could go on a date day, date night, and they had a one of her students, teen girl, um, come and babysit the two younger ones for the first time. Not the two younger ones, the youngest and my granddaughter for the first time. So. My daughter just didn't think that this young girl was up to watching four kids the first time, and I agreed. So anyways, long story short, my grandsons went in the pool last evening, and then I took them to the park, and then they came back, and I had made them dinner. I showered them, and then we watched a movie until their parents came and picked them up, which was a little, 
a little after nine. So they went in the water yesterday and it was cold and it wasn't even as warm as it is out today or it's going to be the rest of the week. So that's my plan. I'm babbling as quickly as I can because I don't want this to be long. But I am struggling. I am very much struggling again. Uh, I'm trying my best not to let it crack me. I did break down for about 30 seconds or less this morning because my head was so bad. And it's, you know, you go along and I know that the LDN is not healing me, but it's helping me and it's bringing my symptoms down. So when I, I just hit this patch of feeling really bad again, um, I allowed myself to cry, but then I said, nope, nope, not going to sit on my butt today. Nope. Still going to go out shopping. I'm going to just, I walked my three miles. I showered. I'm dressed. I'm going to make lunch for us and we're going and I don't care. That's how I look at it. I just don't care. Uh, the worst that's going to happen is I'll fall over and die. Oh, well, here I come, Jesus. I mean, I just, I've sat around in this house for six years and I just know that I can't do it anymore. I can't keep living, non-living and waiting for the other shoe to drop. I am not suggesting by any means that some of you should be doing what I'm doing. I know that it's just impossible. I understand that. Uh, you know, two years ago, it was impossible for me. I totally get it. I'm just telling you for myself. <sighs> Other big news. My brother who lives in Iowa, the one who had that, well, it's the only one who's alive now. I lost my other brother two years ago this coming August. Anyways, the one who has the amputation and he's on dialysis three days a week and kidney disease and heart problems, he is finally um, conceded that he needs to move back here where his family is. And his family being me and his two daughters still live here in this area, not real close, but in this area. He can't even be put on a kidney transplant because he lives alone. And he doesn't have family. So in order for him to even be put on a kidney transplant, he has to move him. And he had said to me, he called me and we had a long talk because I had been telling him since my mother died. My, my sister and I both have been telling him, you have to move back here. You have to move back here. I can take care of you. I've taken, I, boy, I was baptized by fire with taking care of mom. I'm, I'm up to the task now. But he had said, you know, I'm never, I'm never moving back to New York. Never, never. And so when we were talking the other day, he goes, I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm moving back to New York. And I said, never say never. Because you, I had told him a couple weeks ago, almost a month, more than a month ago or more, I had said to him, listen, here's the deal. Move back here when it's your decision. Don't wait until we have to make the decision for you, please. So... We're online. He's looking for a place. He's got to have, um, he'd like senior um, housing, although he's only 55, but because he's disabled, he needs wheelchair accessibility. So we're, we're looking out. He would love to move by fall. It's not going to happen. All these places have got waiting lists as long as my, my, both my legs and arms put together. Um, so probably next spring, would be the earliest unless Lord opens up some door miraculously. But that's the big news is that my brother is moving back to this area. And um, I don't know what that, that entails for me in the future. He said, well, you should uh, be careful for what you wish for because I'll end up moving up there and it will be me calling you just as much as mom used to. Lane, Laney, Laney, Laney. And I said, I know. I know, but that's what families do. And as long as I got breath in my lungs and I can move and I can still drive and I can walk, I'll do whatever I can. So, clonopin. Uh, still only taking 0.25 at night. I'm not doing anything with that for a while, especially with being in this wave right now. Uh, hopefully... 
in the future, I will be able to take the rest of it right off and be off of it altogether. Because my brain, I was just saying this to my friend today, my brain will never truly heal while I'm still on the clonopin. Any of us who are still on any psych med, your brain will never truly heal. You'll never be rid of all your symptoms when you're still on the psych med. It's been proven fact now. Uh, some people do well. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Others don't. Eventually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kick you in the butt. And I never thought. Okay, so she's here. I got to go. I'll post this later. God bless. And Lord willing, I'll see you again sometime soon with another update. Bye-bye. Hello. Um, sorry that this is connected to a, a vlog that was done over a week ago, I think. I can't remember. I'm just going to add this on to it. Um, I'm really going through a bumpy time, you know. Uh, forgive the Oz, <laughs> first of all. I'm getting through, but it's been difficult with different things. I've had some uh, really bad cog fog again, the wackadoodle doodle head. Uh, I'm going to try not to say all. More episodes of somebody wrote it on the Mel DeBarkment. Um, she called it rogue waves <laughs> and I said I'm going to use that because I usually use a, use a brain quake I just had a brain quake having more episodes of that but still forging ahead I did go on the boat on Saturday we had a I had that day was the first day in years that I had absolutely no symptoms whatsoever not one not a one and then this whole week has been kind of crappy. Who knows? I I can't, but we, we did have a good time. And my daughter and Yuda got poison, uh, food poisoning at the restaurant we went to. They ate sushi, in the, obviously, because they both started throwing up at the exact same time, just puking and puking, puking. I had to get them off the boat. I had to drive them home. But it was after we had been out on the boat for most, you know, for quite a while. So we, we had a good time to begin with until the food poisoning hit. And they were fine by the next day. By the by the middle of Sunday, they were fine. Uh, so yesterday, my husband and I went and picked up the delivery truck that Yuta has for her place of business. And picked up the couch from the furniture store and I purchased two chairs off of um, Mar Facebook Marketplace. I will show you the whole thing once I got it set up. Right now I got everything all just disarrayed in that room. It's the family room. We moved that furniture that was in the family room out to the garage in order for, I'm giving the two couches to a friend of mine, but she's got literally one to two weeks and then I'm going to sell it because I can't. I like having my vehicle parked in my garage. So I will leave the garage full of furniture until at least one to two weeks. And if she can't get it out by then, then her time's up. Anyways, the story is, is being in that delivery truck, it was a very, it's an odd kind of cubicle truck. I don't know. Driving, usually I'm fine. I was so off balanced so off balance that when we got to the furniture store, because it was a 20 minute ride from where we picked up the truck, at least 20 minute ride to the place. I get out of the truck and I literally was doing this. I was stumbling. It was so bad. I get into the store and I'm standing, I'm holding onto the, the counter for dear life, trying to talk to these people. And the mal debarkment had hit so severe that I was like brain fogging out. It was it was bad and it lasted. And then we left there and went and picked up the chairs. Another, <coughs> I don't know, <coughs> 10 minutes from there and then had to drive it home. I'm telling you, 
Talk about off-balanced. I literally was staggering like a drunk. My, my balance was so off. And it's... <clears throat> It's very disheartening because you go a period of time feeling like, wow, I'm not getting dizzy anymore. And then you get it so furiously bad that you can't ignore. I just went right to bed and stayed up on my bed. It was night. It was evening by then. It was probably, oh, because then I had a woman. I sold two bar stools, beautiful bar stools that we've never used because when we had our kitchen remodeled, we I ended up having them do the counter too high. So anyways, I sold bar stools. So that woman came... And bought them for me off marketplace. So it was after, it was around seven by the time I got upstairs and got in my bed and just watched TV or actually watched some videos and just stayed in my bed. It was, it was pretty severe. It was severe. And all I can say is that it was that truck ride being up in that truck and the, the windshield wipers only on my side would only, it was raining would only so I wouldn't clean my whole side of the windshield and I was trying to till and I don't know. Also, it's been four weeks that I've been off the clonopin daily clonopin daily dose of clonopin. I'm only taking it at night. Maybe I'm hitting withdrawal now, and those symptoms are gonna be more severe. Who knows? All I know is that I have not been well this week after having a fabulous day on Saturday. Here it is Friday and not well. Been really having struggles most days. But still going out and doing things. You know. <sighs> Today I am going out because I've take I'm selling, I'm having a garage sale next weekend. I'm selling all the decorative items, lamps, pillows, vases, everything that was in that room I'm selling amongst other things and I'm just replacing so I'm going out today to get some new lamps and look for some other decorative items to go in the room because as you'll see the colors are different in there now as far as the furniture then I have um, a, an appointment at four o'clock tomorrow my old church where Yuda still goes to they're having a summer carnival and it's free free food free games free stuff so I plan on go, taking my grandkids. I don't know if my daughter's going to go with me. I'm going to take one or two of the grandkids to that. That's my plan. The other news is that I am going to start tomorrow evening being a greeter at my, at my church's front door. Every third Sunday, I will be a greeter. And that may not sound like a big deal to some of you and to some, and some of the rest of you. Sorry, my... My arm's getting tired. Uh, some of the rest of you will think that is a huge deal. Yes. I have not been able to participate in any real way other than going to grief share um, in my church. So this is my first step. I will get to meet people, obviously, greeting at the front door, recognize faces. It's it's a, one step further into getting to, into real life again and living, even though I'm doing pretty crappy this week. Still going to push ahead because it hasn't killed me. What else can I update you on? Not that you give a flying turkey's feather. Our weather has been crappy. Saturday and Sunday last week was beautiful. That's why we were out on the boat. And then Sunday we barbecued out at the pool the whole day and hung out at the pool. And it's been raining and cold. It's literally 57 degrees right now and raining and miserable, miserable. And the rest of this month, it's most days are 40% or more chance of rain and low 70s. So if this is what summer is going to be like, I'm not going to be happy. Uh, yeah, not, not happy with that. And that's the other thing is that on Sunday, we go from a Wednesday. Wednesday, we had one nice day. I'm sorry. This is Friday. Wednesday, it went up in the high 70s again. It hit eight, Actually, it hit 80 by late afternoon. And then by yesterday, it went down to 50, 57, 56, something like that. It had dropped. And that also affects me. 
I'm telling you, the barometric pressure, it affects my head. I don't care what anyone says. It truly does. I cannot handle um, the huge drop in temperature and barometric pressure. So... That's about it. Four weeks off of the daytime clonopin, sticking to it. I'm sure that I'm in withdrawal. I there some of this has got to be withdrawal. And a lot of my withdrawal symptoms mimic Lyme and all the other things. Fibromyalgia, mal uh, all the stuff. But Nothing that I didn't have while I was on the clonopin. That's the thing. I'm not having anything new that I didn't have while I was still taking the clonopin. So, with that being said, what's the difference, right? So, I have a lot to do today. I'm, I need my husband, when he gets home, to help me put the feet on the new sofa. I thought I could tip the sofa over and get those feet on, but they screw in and I could I don't want to do it. I don't want to. It's a brand new sofa. I don't want to screw something up. So, literally screw something up. So I can't arrange the furniture right now. Uh, I have a, this room is strange as far as wall space. And so arranging the furniture and my husband wants to keep the leather recliner we have because it's big and it's in great condition and he needs something that he can recline in. So trying to rearrange this furniture is going to be tough, but that's something I need to work on. Go to the store, have a, an appointment at 4 o'clock, and then we go on to the next day. So anyway, I just wanted to update you guys. This week has been kind of hairy. <laughs> we had quite a few uh, rogue waves, and... The cog fog, the, the wackadoodle head, yesterday morning was very severe, very severe. And then that went into being very off balanced. My head cleared up and then I got off balanced. Does that make any sense? No, but none of this makes sense, does it? We're all crazy. So I'm still walking outside, even in this weather. Uh, I'm waiting for it to, I think it's, Kind of clearing up for an hour. I'm watching the Weather Channel so I can get out and walk my three miles. Still doing that every single day. Will not quit ever doing that, as God, Lord willing. Hope this finds you all well. So, four weeks off the Clonopin, guys. And I'm still here, still breathing, and still talking. Yep. Off of the daytime dose. I'm still on 0.25 which would be equivalent to two and a half milligrams of Valium if I was to, I had done the crossover twice to try to get off Clonopin in the past and just couldn't survive it. So if I was still on Valium trying to wean or taper off, I would be down to two and a half milligrams of Valium, which is not anything compared to the amount I was taking. I mean, at one point I was taking 15 milligrams of Valium. I have a girlfriend who was taking 45. So two and a half milligrams of Valium is a very small amount. So 0.25 of Clonopin is a small amount. And the fact that I cut my Clonopin, as I've said in the past, I cut it right in half. Most people would tell you, don't do that. You got to taper, you got to shave, you got to weigh, you got to shave. I totally agree with that. But with the LDN, I felt like um, the LDN was softening the blow and it has the LDN I still am a firm believer in the LDN I still have a good month and a over a month of that 2.5 milligrams and then I will go up to either I'm not quite sure if I want to go right to three milligrams or try to 2.7 I'll probably go to three milligrams and just you know grip my teeth <laughs> but again I've said this several times and I will say it over and over again if you have not tried LDN and you are suffering from Lyme disease, lupus, fibromyalgia, MS, any of these autoimmune things, anything like that, please try it. Do what you can to get on it and just try it. 
it, the worst that's going to happen is nothing's going to happen. But it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to harm you. And at the very best, it's going to help you. So I just keep saying that. And apparently, June is... They've decided June is Mel de, uh, de Debarkment Awareness. So... Spam calls, I should say, not scam. Sorry about that. So if you don't know anything about Mel de de Debarkment, please uh, Google it and do some research. It's a true um, syndrome. I absolutely have it, along with other things. Because I get the, yesterday, I'm, I'm riding in the truck, and I felt like I was on a boat. I was rocking and bobbing and rocking and bobbing. And as I said, when I got off the, out of the truck, I literally was stumbling. I had to like, holy moly, because I've not had that in a long time. And it's, it's scary. I won't keep going. God bless. Take care. Uh, Lord willing, I, I'll try to come back on and do another little quick vlog. I don't know how many of you are even watching or even caring. So that's why I don't do this very often. Because it's really more for me than anyone else, I guess. But love any of you who are watching. You know who you are. I instant message you guys privately. Bye-bye. So long. Farewell.